Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This will be part three of Destiny. All right. Uh, it's kind of very difficult to cover it in a couple lessons, so I will share with you a little bit more concerning it on tonight. I'm going to call your attention to the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, the book of Revelation, or the revelation of Jesus Christ written to us by the Apostle John. Those of you that were here last Sunday morning and Sunday night, <clears throat> I began to teach on this, and I want to do my level best just to enlighten you on where God's plan and purpose was for each one of us in his body concerning the destiny that he has planned for you and I. There's not very much interest on the planet concerning this, by the way. In my career as a pastor and a minister and just commingling with people, not that many people are really interested in destiny. But everyone should be because it has to do with you. Once again, I am a firm believer that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And with that in mind, we should have the highest respect and regard for that which has been written. And I'm going to tell you where we are tonight in a very advantageous place because we're able now to take this Bible, delve into 66 books, and look back and see what prophets of old said and watch it come to fruition as we even speak. The amazing and glorious thing is the pinpoint accuracy that it is fulfilled, which should let all of us know that when the word goes out of the mouth that's anointed by God through these apostles, it will never return unto God void. In other words, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. God breathed it. Now you know as well as I do, there's tremendous opposition to the Holy Bible. A man wrote it. God doesn't exist. So you have billions of people who are atheists, agnostic, secular humanists that don't believe anything that's written in it. But there's a portion of the human race that has embraced the validity and the authenticity of the Bible that is really divinely inspired and what has come out of his mouth will never return into him void. And so therefore I take uh, this opportunity to share with you something that might take place in the very, very, very near future. Revelation 20, I'll give you the setting here. Revelation gives us the understanding of last things in theologians conversation is called eschatology. What will happen in the end? This chart behind me actually goes from, well, it goes from eternity to eternity. But this particular chart that I use actually is a revelation of the word. The late Dr. Gosey that was so well versed and so good in, in making charts. This takes you from in the beginning God created all the way to eternity future, so to speak. In between, if I can use this terminology, eternity, God created time. And for the last 6,000 years, God has allowed human beings that he created to walk this planet that he created. And he had a purpose. In my uh, class and some of you are my students in apologetics, we're at the part in the class where we're dealing with the problem with evil because many people don't understand evil, where it comes from, how it would be eradicated. And some people will take evil to turn around and disregard God and say he doesn't exist. But God can take things that might be evil and turn them into a plus. And so when a person chides God because of some particular, what we may call a tragedy, actually God 
may get the glory out of it and bring about positive results. Case in point, what took place in probably the oldest book in the Bible allows you to know that there was a man by the name of Job. When you read about Job, the Bible says clearly he was a man who shunned evil and he was upright. And the devil, Lucifer, Satan, amen, challenged God. Some of you know the story. He said, the reason why Job is what he is is because you got a hedge around him. You keep on making him prosper. And the Lord said, I tell you what, I'm going to take the hedge away. Well, God knew what Job would do under evil circumstances. Some of you may re remember the story that one day while all his children were feasting, all 10 of them died in a house. That's a pretty tough blow. Most can't stand one child dying, but all 10 died in a house. All of his livestock was taken away from him. All of his money. And the last thing, the devil said, well, if I, if I can do this, I got him. He said, skin for skin. In other words, a man will spend his last dime to have good health. The devil knew that. It was, the devil said it, but it was true. A man will spend every dollar he got to get a decent quality of life. Amen. And so the Lord said, I tell you what, I'm going to let you attack his body. You just can't kill him. Y'all know the story. And for a period of several months, Job suffered to the max. I mean, his broke out with boils, set down in dirt and ashes. Wife even went against him, but he never chided God. And then James gives you the end of the story. Look at God's long suffering. Amen. And God gave him double for his trouble. Amen. And the devil lost again. So sometimes things come up that seem to be very evil. Amen. But God works it out for his glory. I'll give you another case in point. The man who's responsible for writing 27% of the New Testament is a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. He was a man that God used to even raise the dead, write down scriptures, heal the sick, prolific missionary. And the Bible says he had a thorn in his flesh and it was a messenger from Satan. He said, I prayed three times for God to remove it and God wouldn't do it. He said, Job, in your weakness, you're strong. The reason why I'm not going to move it from you, if I do, you may get conceited because I've showed you so much. So I'm going to leave it there so you keep your spiritual equilibrium. So sometimes things come into our, our experience that we don't understand why. We just have to say, God knows. Because there's a whole lot of things in as old as I am now. I've seen a whole lot in my old age <laughs> that I don't know why. But God knows why. Amen. So in Revelation, the first three chapters deal with John getting information, giving the church ammunition on their temperature, things that God did not approve of and things that he did. And he concludes with a church called Laodicea. It's the age that predominantly is the characteristics of right now where we are. And right now where we are is a very lukewarm time where the people dictate the preaching. It's hard to find preachers that are going to be honest and preach it like it says because they're afraid to offend somebody. So now what you have is pulpit puppets. They'll say what makes people happy and what tickles your ears, which Paul said, they would heap to them teachers having itching ears. They'll say smooth things. That's how that prosperity message got out. But now you can't really use it because now that the economy is the way it is, that message don't work. It, it never was really biblical, no how, but uh, people got on that bandwagon. And so therefore, we live in a time where apathy is set in. And I'll say this, most people are not looking for the reappearing of Jesus. They're really not. 
it's not a major concern to the human race. We're more concerned as a body of people about, I need a quick fix right now. So we think when we go to the polls and vote that we're gonna have some abaca, abaca zoo, and it don't happen. Hallelujah. And so therefore, we find ourselves in a time where if you're looking for the appearing of Jesus, you're a little off base. People think you're a little nuts. But the Bible is clear. And let me say this in this Bible class. The reappearing of Jesus doesn't depend on me or you looking for him. He comes back when he wants to. His authority is not subject to a human being. He's God all by himself. Amen. Therefore, him reappearing is a certainty, whether anybody believes it or not. Amen. Keep in mind, he says, as it was in the days of Noah. And who knows how many people, we have to guess, we may say several hundred million people, but only eight souls were saved by water. Only eight survived. Take that today with 6 billion, 800 million plus people. How many people in the human race, even if it's 500 million, that's a small amount. They would really be looking for him to reappear. But he makes it clear that he's coming back when people think not. In an hour when they think not to fulfill his own will. Because sin will never have the last say so. Amen. Because when God makes anything, when he originally makes it, it's perfect. Amen. That's a whole nother lesson. Some of you may not know it. When he made Lucifer, he was perfect. Lucifer wasn't tainted when he was created. He became Satan when he got caught up in his good looks and his pride. Amen. But when he was originally made, if you read what he looked like, there was no being in heaven, amen, that had more beauty than Lucifer. Wisdom. He could sing. He had a lot going for him. But he got caught up in himself. And he comes the father of lies. So now Lucifer is Satan, Diablo Apollyon, and he moves up and down as the prince of the power of the air. And God would even use him to accomplish his purpose. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our great God, was not caught off guard. God did not go to plan B because plan A didn't work. You got to understand that he is the potter. We are the clay. He is the creator. We are the creature. His plan and purpose was to create a people for his name's sake. He said it clearly upon this rock. I'm going to build me a church. I'm going to have a people out of a people who will willfully respond to my grace by faith. Because keep in mind now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Because people of faith realize that there will come a time where they will be rewarded for their faith. Because God is the one who made the rules. Am I right? Revelation 20. We just passed through the third chapter. And by the time you get to the fourth and fifth chapter of Revelation, the scene is not on earth. It's the scene in heaven. At that particular juncture, the church is in heaven. The spirits have just been made perfect. Angels, whether they be seraphims, cherubims, archangels, whatever they may be, they're all there. And we're rejoicing. We've now been raptured or caught up called the parousia or the harpazo. The church has now been caught up. That is every believer, spirit filled from the day of Pentecost up to this present hour. Every last one of them are caught up and they get their first glimpse at seeing this great God and Savior face to face and they are ecstatic. 
that they obeyed the gospel. By the time you get to the sixth chapter, through the 19th chapter, the earth is having its most horrific day, unprecedented in horror, amen. And at the conclusion of the 19th chapter, here comes King Jesus and the church coming back to restore Israel to its prominency. And after that period of time, which will last seven years, we have what we call the millennium. And it could start in the next eight or nine years or sooner. I don't know, and no one else knows either. But there will be, some of you don't know what millennium means, it means 1,000 year reign. And what's gonna be so marvelous about this 1,000 years? For the last 6,000 years, human beings don't know what it's like to live in an environment where Satan is not. Amen. Satan has been banting and messing with folk for 6,000 years. But during that 1,000 year period, he's bound for 1,000 years and he can't go out and tempt anybody. There'll be a forced peace. And the earth is going to flourish. Israel's going to have its national promise. And here where we are. We will reign with him, the people of the church, not only in the millennium, but throughout the new heaven and new earth that God says he will create, and he says it's already done. And most folk don't even give a kitty, but I do. In Revelation 20, now we see the resurrection. Amen. He says something here. I'm going to be reading from the NIV, and I'll explain a few verses as we go through it, beginning at verse number 4. Look what John saw. And I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. Hold it. Somebody's been given authority to judge. All right? If I fast forward it to you, remember, and I'm going to get to it in the scriptures, when the Lord told his apostles, they were disciples, who were apostles, that one day you will sit on 12 thrones judging. Am I right? Amen. In other words, you have a place of prominency in eternity with me. You're going to sit and you will judge. You will reign with me. It will be God delegating whatever authority it is for us during that particular time. So John said, I saw it. Keep in mind now, this John is the Apostle John who is <laughs> schooled in what I call the University of Jesus for three and a half years. He witnessed his ministry, his life, his death, burial, resurrection, as well as ascension, and then went out, preached, responsible for the gospel of St. John, as well as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the revelation of Jesus Christ, which makes up 22 chapters in your Bible. Amen. And I think, and I'll fast forward, I think if I had been John, even though I was in a prison island called Patmos, infested with poisonous snakes, and I looked up and saw the, and began to write down what the 21st and 22nd chapter of Revelation has to say, and see my name in the foundation of the eternal city, I think I would have shouted right there without an organ, a piano, or anything else, look where God is bringing me to. Am I right? Because he there with the apostles' names are in the foundation. Amen. Then he goes on to say, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and not received its mark on their foreheads or in their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Hold it now. Now you got to understand, amen, the, <laughs> the chronology of this. The church is already in heaven. So who are these? These are tribulation saints. They missed the rapture. They did not receive him, uh, did not receive the gospel. So they were ushered into the tribulation, and a remnant of the human race is going to say, we're going to serve God now. And they have somebody preaching to them. They have 144,000 that God has designated, 12,000 of every tribe, they also have two witnesses that come down and even an angel. And they do not take the mark of Antichrist, amen, because they're wise enough now to know if we take the mark, 
Amen. We are eternally damned. So somebody's preaching when people like me are gone. But the problem here is they're going to have to give up their life. The Bible says they were beheaded. You know as well as I do the temperature is right now ready for anybody that would embrace Christ because they're crucifying Christians all over the world right now. So it won't be hard for the, the Antichrist and the false prophet to present their agenda and those who won't receive it have to suffer death by their hands. Hallelujah. And for those of you who do not think, amen, that all of the machinery is ready for him to, to do his thing, they got a chip so small you can hardly see it that has all your data in it. There'll be, most people will take the mark because you cannot buy and sell. And can you imagine going into the store or going to the dentist or going to the doctor and can get no service because you cannot present the mark? and you are turned down, that's going to be some, some kind of suffering. Am I right? Amen. And if you don't have the mark, you cannot buy, uh, sell. You, I mean, you out there, you are a ship, a canoe without a paddle. Amen. And so many will succumb. They will lose their life. And he says he brings them back to life. And they are part of the first resurrection. Now, they do not qualify as the church. They have eternal life, they'll be dressed in white, and they will serve him day and night. But this is a whole nother group, because in the first resurrection, amen, it's already started. The first one in the first resurrection was Jesus Christ. He's the first fruits of them that slept. If you read Matthew's encounter, and after he got up, old saints were walking in the holy city, am I right? So it's obvious they're moved on up to paradise. Then he says, when he comes back for the church, then we'll be there. Am I right? Amen. Not only that, then there will be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the patriots. They are the just men made perfect. They're the spirits of just men made perfect. It's going to be some kind of get together when you get to see not only the Old Testament patriots, but you get to see David and Abraham and Isaac and Ezekiel and then Peter, Paul, James, John, and hopefully we'll see you. Amen. And they're all there giving God some glory and giving God some praise that his word stood the test of time and though a man didn't believe it, his counsel shall stand. Hallelujah. Because he is the God that can perform the resurrection from the dead. The same God that said, dust thou art and dust thou shalt return. And the Bible says in Adam all die, but in, uh, but in Christ Jesus all shall be made alive. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the only one that can create a man. Amen. Make him pay for his penalty. Turn around and give him grace and raise him up at the latter day. I'm the only one that can put breath in a man's nostrils. Amen. Let him lose his breath and then give him new breath when I come back for him. I am Jesus. I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And there's nobody my equal. Hallelujah. I created man for my own purpose and I will bring my plan to fruition because I will have me a church. And I will have to be a people for my own purpose that will willfully serve me because they want to. Glory to God. God don't make nobody believe him. He gives you every opportunity, but it's up to you. He'll draw you. He'll woo you. He'll let you sit in a setting like this. You can say, thumbs up, walk out the door, say, I don't want no part of it. That would be your loss. But my, my, somebody embraced him. What if some men don't believe the word of God? Does that make it of none effect? God, nah, 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 nah. Hallelujah. His word stands the test of time if don't nobody believe it. If you're not faithful, he's always faithful. He cannot deny himself. No matter what they say, he said, I don't deny myself. I know who I am. You're trying to find out who you are. I'm trying to make you what you need to be, but you'll have to put all your trust in me. And so here we are at this resurrection. My, my, my. They worship, had not worshipped the beast or its image, had not received its mark on their foreheads or in their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Then he says, the rest of the dead did not come to life 
until the thousand years were ended, he said, this is the first resurrection. You know what they're saying? There is a host of people that do not get up at the same time the saved folks get up. They remain. They don't get up and come before the judgment seat until a thousand years has elapsed. Whatever they're doing, most of them probably in hell, and hell coughs up <laughs> its participants, and then they're banished to the lake of fire. My, 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 my. But blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Y'all there? Going to reign with him a thousand years. So we reign with him a thousand years, and then we reign with him throughout eternity. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. Let me fast forward. I really don't want to get into this. You know what he's saying? In that thousand years, that the whole earth will be repopulated and longevity will be restored to mankind as it was in the days of Adam and Noah. So think about it. You have a whole lot of babies when you live to be four, five, six hundred years old. Amen. You'll be considered a mere youth if you only live to be a hundred. Amen. And so the world will be repopulated. You can, he says right here, has the sand on the seashore. But the peace is forced because there's no Satan to tempt them, but the people are not born again. You know what God is doing? He's allowing you one last opportunity to govern yourself. And we fail. As soon as Satan is loosed, he goes out, deceives the nation, and the battle of Gog and Magog they got the gall to try to attack headquarters, Jerusalem, but this time God rains down fire, burns them up, and then what you have is the great white throne judgment, and all those not found in the book were cast into the lake of fire where the Antichrist and the false prophet had been for 1,000 years, and now Satan got to go, and it enlarged itself for all those who want to follow him. And that will be the last battle and the last judgment in all of mankind, history, and eternity. That will be it. And then God will make everything brand new. So you got a front row seat now, and don't give up your seat. You want to you keep this seat. You'll be able to, amen, be in heaven while tribulation is on earth. You get a riding opportunity to come back and watch him rescue Israel. You get to reign with him through the thousand years and then be ushered into the new heaven and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness and be with him forevermore. You'll never be moored, never be tired, amen, and you will praise him and won't nobody have to pump you up. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, 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 that's the scene in heaven. Let me move on over a little bit further. Turn with me, amen. I'm not going to finish this tonight, amen, but this is important. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 at the judgment seat. Right now, you and I have salvation, but we will be judged for what we do, the motive and why we do it, and some people really don't care what they do. But when he, Solomon writes this concluding Amen. Statement. He tells, says something that everyone ought to take notice to. And I want you to know, this man was qualified to say this, by the way. Amen. Not only was he a king for 40 years, but whatever he desired, he had. He had all the women you could think of, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Amen. All them children. He had pools of water. Amen. He had his own, amen, navy. He had, he had his own vineyards. He had everything a man could think of. He had his own male singers. He, I mean, he had everything. Amen. Hallelujah. And then on top of that, he kept his senses. But then he disobeyed his God. He picked up strange women, and they turned him from the living God, amen, to their 
idolatry, am I right? My Lord. But notice what he says, amen, at the end of his writings when he's already written Proverbs, Songs of Solomon, we have the book of Ecclesiastes in the 12th chapter, he says this in verse number 13, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Keep in mind, God has always demanded obedience. Always. Because, I want to say something to you, a lot of people say they love God, but they won't obey God. You will never prove to God that you love him by disobeying him. Amen. Love has action to it. You cannot say you love somebody and you don't have some action. Amen. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. They only had one commandment. Amen. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they failed. Can you imagine all the trees they could have eat, eaten from? Tree of life, everything. Amen. And one test. I'm going to test you and see if you really love me. Amen. And Adam and Eve failed the test. You know, Eve was deceived. Adam willfully left his father and cleaved unto his wife, and we've been in trouble for the last 6,000 years. Y'all don't want to hear that, but it's the truth anyhow. Amen. Because the woman did not like her sentence that she would be subject to a man. The man didn't like it. He got to work with the sweat of his brow. Then a woman would have to have a baby, have all kinds of pain. Am I right? Amen. But thank God one day all that's going to come to naught. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, here the conclusion. Now, now, notice what he says. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. That right there ought to make you stand up and applaud God. Let me tell you why. You mean to tell me everybody from Adam to the end of the age? He knows every infant, every teenager, every adolescent, every old person, whether they be yellow, black, or white, everybody who lived, amen, in the deepest part to Africa, whether it be Brazil, whether it be in South America, whether it be Canada or America, I know everybody that's ever been on the planet. I know everything they've done. I know all of their thoughts and every motive because I'm God and I'm omniscient. I know you, if you died at five years old, I know if you died at 105, I know when you was born, I know what your mom was going to name you before you got here, I know what kind of job you had, I know when you stole the pencils from the job, I saw you, amen, when you said you didn't want to give me no glory, I know everything about you, I even know secrets that you ain't told nobody, I know what you think about when you're all by yourself, I saw you when you was behind the rock trying to hide from me, I know everything about you, and I'm going to bring it front and center, and everybody's going to be judged at the judgment seat, whether it be good or whether it be bad. I'm trying to make as much good as I can because you, uh, you can't get away from the judgment of God. God is going to judge everybody and the motive behind what you did. And all the things they tried to jam down your throat and legalize sin and try to make you practice sin and tell you it ain't real, God's going to bring that to your mind. I already told you what was permissible, what's not permissible, and since you didn't want to obey me, you have to suffer the consequences. Amen. And I'll tell you something that'll blow your mind. When you look at those that go to hell, he don't start off with the homosexual. He don't start off with the adulterer. He started with the cowardly and the unbelieving. He says, you didn't even believe me. Yeah, the homosexual goes to hell and so does the adulterer. But he said the cowardly, those of you that would not stand up, those of you that are unbelievers, you didn't believe what I said. I told you, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You ought to believe me. Say, I don't believe you. How can you not believe me? All you got to do is look out and see my universe. All you got to see is the orchestration of the constellation. All you got to do is look at the galaxies and know that I am God. Man is without excuse. Hallelujah. And if that ain't enough, go look in the mirror and say, look who made you. Hallelujah. With all the billions of particles from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. He said, you ought to look at me and give my name glory that you can wake up in the morning and you didn't wake up yourself that I turned around and gave you an atmosphere that you can believe in and you won't give me no glory. I'm the one that allows your heart to beat so many beats and cause your system to digest all that junk you've been eating. Who do you think woke you up this morning from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? My name is to be praised. I'm the one that put the hair on your head. I'm the one that gave you eyeballs. Who can give you a blood system like I gave you? Who you think is holding you together? Said you ought to praise me because ain't nobody like me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm not chiding none of y'all, but I'll tell you this, the gall of us human beings, to have to be pumped up to give him some praise, to turn around and say, I got to have an organ or a piano or a drum, amen, and I need a song leader to start praising him. You ought to just look around and say, Lord, let me give your name some glory when I think of the power that you will and who you are. You deserve my praise if I don't even have a whistle to blow. You deserve my praise if I don't have a tambourine to beat. Every time I look at what you've done makes me give your name the glory. Hallelujah. St. John 5, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mighty God is he. Uh, amen. Your gestation period ought to make you shout how a man can one come together, amen, put sperm in the womb of a woman, and nine months later, a bouncing baby boy come out with your, oh my Lord, with eyeballs and hands and hair, amen, and look just like you, talk like you, walk like you. What a mighty God we serve. And give him a different fingerprint than you got. Amen. You don't even have the same thumbprint as your own daddy and mama, because God is so creative that he ain't got nobody on earth they got the same thumbprint that ought to make somebody give God some glory what an imagination how can you get that many designs off of a thumb look like he would have run out after a while but there ain't no one thumbprint just like another thumbprint mighty God is he somebody ought to give him some glory and give him some praise amen look what he has made hallelujah my 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 hallelujah glory to God for the invisible things of God from the creation are clearly seen by the things that are made. Even his eternal power in God here, he said, man is without excuse. The atheist is a fool. The fool is said in his heart, there is no God. Because the atheist says, when you die, you ain't going nowhere. But that ain't what the Bible says. Hallelujah. We're going to all stand before the judgment seat. Uh, let me prove it. St. John 5. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my what you ought to be shouting about that somebody invited you to a church where you could be born again and you ran across somebody that has the Holy Ghost. That's what you ought to be shouting about rather than debating tongues and all that kind of stuff. Be glad you ran across a tongue talker. You ought to be glad you ran across somebody who'd been filled with the Holy Ghost. It was good to admit the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter, amen, since they had the keys to the kingdom. I'd like to know somebody that got some keys to the kingdom. Amen. I don't need to know the president. Just find me somebody who got the keys to the kingdom. I don't need my name in the White House. Just give me somebody who got the keys to the kingdom. I don't need to have my name down on Hollywood Boulevard. Just give me somebody who got the keys to the kingdom. Tell me what must I do to be safe. Introduce me to somebody that will allow me to know what my destiny is. Glory be to God. Lord, help us to be witnesses. Rather running somebody out the church, we ought to be trying to grab somebody and drag them up in here. Talking about you don't need to come to church. There's a whole lot of folk need church. Hey Amen. You done got saved. Now you're gonna be stingy on getting somebody else. Everybody ought to know, know, know how to be born again. If I don't preach nothing but the death, burial, and resurrection, you ought to say, come on here, you can hear the death, burial, and resurrection. Because without that, you can't be saved no how. St. John 5. Glory be to God. Thank God, thank God. You bless beyond measure right now. Uh, half y'all don't know it, you don't even believe it. You bless beyond measure right now. In fact, if the truth was told, you, you don't even understand why God's being so good to you. Why God has showed you mercy. You could be in Haiti full of cholera right now. You could be in Nigeria eating rats. You could be somewhere in the Philippines trying to find uh, some mud to eat. You could be somewhere with ash all over you. Amen. You could be somewhere where somebody's raping your mama and raping your wife. You could be somewhere where there's no law whatsoever, but look where you are tonight. You could be somewhere where there's nothing to eat and no place to go, lay down and go to sleep tonight. But look how kind God has been to you and I. Somebody ought to give him some praise. Somebody ought to come back and say, Lord, I want to thank you. Amen. Somebody uh, thanking that you ain't lost your mind, all that weed you done smoked. Amen, all that cocaine you done snorted. 
all that alcohol you done drunk, you ought to thank God you didn't lose your mind. You could be laying out on Fifth Street pickled somewhere, but God was kind enough to help you get over here. You could be full of disease, amen, because you know you've been fornicating. You've been laying with somebody that wasn't your spouse. You ought to thank God. When he looked down, he said, mercy, 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 mercy. And I deserved that, but mercy stepped in. Somebody ought to thank him for mercy. When we were rolling dice and shooting pool and gambling, he said, mercy, mercy, you need to know me. St. John 5, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I've been filled with the Holy Ghost for 39 years. I wouldn't turn around for nothing. Amen. If I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. I'm rolling with this, y'all. Ah, uh, thank God for the anointing. Praise God. And I don't even need y'all to applaud or say amen. I got my own dime. Amen. I'm already happy in Jesus all by myself. Hallelujah. Chapter number 5. The book of St. John, verse 24 says this, Verily, verily, I tell you, whoever hears my word, believes him who sent me, has eternal life, will not be judged, but is crossed over from death to life. It, first of all, God cannot give you anything greater than eternal life. <laughs> that's the best he can do, and that's enough. Eternal life. Since he's eternal, he gives you his life. And there's nothing greater than eternal life. Glory be to God. Mm, mm, mm. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming, has now come, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Let me stop there. You ought to be glad you heard it. Because when he got us, we were dead in trespasses and sins. But thank God, the wooing of the Holy Ghost was in your Sunday school lesson, I think it was last week. Thank God for him tugging on your heart and wooing you and aroused you. Thank God he disturbed your situation that you might seek a higher life. Hallelujah. Because you could have just stayed in oblivion. Amen. Hallelujah. But God's allowed you to get restless and begin to ask some questions concerning life and death and eternity. And thank God he gave you the answer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For if there is no eternal life, we wasted our time coming down here tonight. And if Jesus did not rise from the dead, I'm a liar, a false prophet, and everybody I preach to is perish. But he's risen. Amen. He did get up. He rose from the dead, no matter who says he didn't rise. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Please don't follow Darwin, Sigmund Freud, Aristotle, etc. Wrong. Follow Paul as he followed Christ. For as the Father has life in himself, so his grand the Son have life in himself. He's giving him authority to judge because he's the Son of Man. Now watch this. Do not be amazed at this, for the time is coming, here's Revelation 20 now, when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live. Those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Hmm. Let me give you a test. This is on the tape. People think I'm arrogant, I show no mercy, because so many people, when they fall, they try to make it like God made them do it. God don't tempt nobody with evil. But let me share this with you. You actually can be a preacher and not believe the Bible. You can preach it, quote it, and don't believe it. You know how to modulate, sweat, do all this stuff, and don't believe it. You can do it for money. Do it for popularity and really don't believe it. Israel had the gospel preached to them. It was of none effect because it wasn't mixed with faith. So you can quote scripture, memorize scripture, and still not believe it. Amen. But let me share this with you. I know you're hearing a whole lot about preachers falling, whether they be with men, women, what are they doing. Let me tell you, the man who falls into that kind of sin can willfully practice those type of abominations does not believe Amen. 
Jesus is coming back. Impossible. And I'll give you scripture. First John 3 and 2, you have to pick it up. I'll just quote it to you. And every man that hath this hope in him, he purifieth himself. You don't need nobody to purify you. When you got the hope that you will see him face to face, you will purify yourself. You won't even need me. All you will need is a hope. And that hope of being Christ, and you said, because of my hope, I'll purify myself. Because the God that I serve am holy, and I will not. But you got to meditate. You got to think on it. You got to stay in services like this. You got to remind yourself, hallelujah, I got a hope in me, and I'm not going to do anything to lessen my reward in heaven. Glory be to God. First Corinthians chapter number six. Remember that judge thing? Remember that judge thing? When this was written, Revelation hadn't been written. When Paul wrote this, 1 Corinthians 6, Revelation hadn't been written. Revelation was written somewhere between 85 and 95. Some may say as late as 100 AD. These letters were written in the 60s. But somewhere along the line, they must have informed the saints that they're going to reign one day. And though you find it here, you wonder, who preached that to them? Let me show you. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 2. Or do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? The church is going to judge with him. Verse 3. Do you not know that we will judge angels? Did not Revelation 20 say that they, in the first resurrection, they sat on thrones and they were judging. Paul is trying to say, do you understand who you are? As a child of God, you got authority delegated by God. If you overcome, you reign with him. What a mighty God we serve. You mean you letting us in on all this? Surely I ought to give your name some glory. No wonder Paul could turn around and say, I say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He said, I called everything as dung for the excellency of the knowledge that's in Christ Jesus to know what God has called me to. He says, I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that, huh? Which I committed unto him against that day. Am I right? Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Hebrews 9, judgment thing again. Verse number 27, just as people are destined to die once, now, see, you don't need no faith to die. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to have enough faith not to die. Yeah, you are. You're going to die. If the rapture don't take place, you're getting up out of here. Just a matter of time. You want to hear that part. After that, to face judgment. As certain as death is, that's how certain judgment is. Watch out here. So Christ was sacrificed wants to take away the sins of many, and he will appear the second time. You know folk ain't looking for him. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Somebody waiting for him. Somebody really believes he's coming back. When he appears next time, it won't be to go to the cross. When he comes back this next time, he's coming back to take his people, and the next time he's coming, he's executing judgment. Because the lamb is now the lion of the tribe of Judah. Job got this information. He said, I'd, I'd like to write it down somewhere where it would last forever. You got to read him. You don't have to turn to it, the 19th chapter of Job. Then he says this. He says, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And then he says this. It's paramount. He shall stand at the latter day. Though the skin worms eat my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He had never met St. John. Whew. Who gave him that? Daniel 12, there is an inheritance. Something's about to break, y'all. Something's about to break. And you know why? Because man doesn't have the solution. Look how we're struggling in America. Who to put in office? You put a man in office, he ages 20 years and two. <laughs> what he looked like two years ago, he looked 20 years older now. Too much stress and pressure. On top of that, 
To be politically correct, you got to run between the raindrops. Because if you don't appease one group, huh, they get mad. And so you can't really please all the people. So what you have? Bumping heads. So there is no solution. There will be none. There will be a false one, though. This man that's coming out called Antichrist, he's a bad boy. He's a man for all seasons. He will have an answer to the economic crises. He'll even have that. His answer will be so great that Israel will even sign a covenant with death. They actually will sign a covenant with death. Divide the land. You ought to be glad before all this starts, tribulation, the church is gone. Now you think prophecy is being fulfilled right now? Wait till the church is caught up. It will be fast forward. I'm glad I won't be here to see it. Now if you're in this room and you're here to be introduced to Antichrist, know that you missed the rapture. Daniel 12. Daniel's given this information. At that time, Michael, one of the few angels that are named in the Bible, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will await, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. What did Daniel get? He got a 1,000 year window. The ones who woke up in everlasting life, the rest of them don't get up for 1,000 years according to what we read in Revelation 20, am I right? And he says, but before that, there would be distressed of nations. Then he goes on and tell you, knowledge will increase. They will be running to and fro, but he lets you to know something big is happening here, real big. <laughs> the world is under its most horrific hour it's ever had to deal with. Amen. But you will be delivered. Everyone whose name is in the book. Amen. Well, let me just drop that on you. Do you remember when the disciples came back, they'd been sent out, 70 of them, two by two. They came back and said, Lord Jesus, at your name, the demons even subject to us. Amen. I mean, we got power now. When we go and just use your name, folk get healed. Demons got to scatter. Just, ain't that some kind of authority? When you go, just use my name. Watch what happens. They came back and said, demons are subject. They were rejoicing. He said, don't rejoice over that. He said, but rather rejoice that your name is in the book of life. That's what you rejoice about. Get glad that your name is in my book. Somebody said, how did I get there? This man and that man were born in her when I writeth up the book. Being born again ain't no small thing. To be born of the water and of the spirit is colossal. Thank God my name is in the book. Because if your name is in the book, you will not have to deal with the second death. And I'm glad my name is in the book. And the only way you know your name is in the book, you're going to have to know you've been filled with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is God's guarantee letting you to know that he's granted repentance unto life. Everybody else is assuming a guessing, but we ain't assuming a guessing. Oh, hallelujah, because no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. You may assume he's Lord, but you do not know him intimately until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And thank God, when the day of Pentecost come, he opened up an intimate relationship. I'm going to be in you, and you are going to be in me. Hallelujah. And if you have me in you, I'll raise you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's see if Daniel has inheritance. Verse number 13. God says, Daniel, you got to close it up. John said, open it up. He told John to open it up in Revelation. He told Daniel to close it up. Do you know how long it's been since it's been written? About 2,560 or 70 years ago. And you're watching it come to fruition. When Daniel uttered this, Amen. You're talking, amen, over 2,500 years ago. And guess what? He never saw an airplane, a missile, nobody going to the moon. He wasn't walking around with a cell phone, no computer, knowledge increasing while we're sitting in here. And yet he said knowledge was going to be unprecedented. Moving fastly. All y'all came, nobody came here on a bicycle today. Most of y'all drove down here. Somebody gave you a ride. Amen. Hallelujah. Look what God has done in the last 100 years. Amen. Hallelujah. Our great-grandparents, all they could say was giddy up. 
Amen. But look at you now. You say starter up. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Look how knowledge has increased. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of y'all still scared to fly. Amen. Amen. But somebody turned around and made an engine, went to Rolls Royce, and now you're flying through the air 38,000 feet and telling somebody I'll be there in four hours. You know you got to have a lot of gall or a whole lot of faith in mankind that God will keep that plane flying through the air. Amen. Crossing the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Amen. With nowhere to park. And you depending on somebody put the engine together right somewhere in a stall. Amen. And some amen, some hanger, and you got the nerve to sit down there and have lunch flying across the water, amen, and somebody getting drunk next to you, you ought to be praying, amen, there ain't nobody to park to stay nowhere. We ought to thank God his word has been fulfilled in our lifetime. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he says to Daniel, as for you, go your way to the end. You will rest. In other words, Daniel, you're getting ready to die now. And then at the end of days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. My, 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 that ought to have been something, love. You mean Daniel? Yeah, you got inheritance because you love me. You had purpose in life. Hallelujah. You risked your own life. To give my name glory. When everybody was bowing down, you stood up. When everybody was eating, you said, I don't eat meat. Hallelujah. You prayed when everybody else was talking. When, I, when the king commanded to bow down, you wouldn't bow down. Daniel, you got something going for you. Hallelujah. Not only did I make you strong now, I'm gonna, I have an inheritance for you. You will be there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will have a lot of inheritance because you gave me glory while you were on earth. Glory be to God. And guess what? We are sons of God, joint heirs with Christ, and so therefore we have an inheritance. We ought to thank God. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be altogether glorious. I'm glad I'm running in this company here. I said, I'm glad I'm in the company of the patriots. I'm glad I'm in the company of the apostles. I'm glad I'm in the company of the church. <laughs> Glory be to God. Well, how many want a full reward? Then give me 2 John. Uh, that's right in between 1 John and 3 John. Ain't but one chapter, so I ain't going to say what chapter. 2 John. Hallelujah. Verse number six, here's where we ought to be tonight. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. Oh, wow. This is love. I love you, Lord, because I'm obeying you. I believe you. As you've heard from the beginning, his commandment is that you walk in love. Oh, hallelujah. In a world that is so disobedient. And the, the younger, they're getting younger and younger being disobedient. Eight years old, seven years old, 12 years old. Kids swinging on their parents, cussing them out. No respect. That's where we are today. You got to hear some of these that work in social services, how these kids are challenging their parents. Parents don't know what to do with them. We live in a tough time. No respect for nothing. Nothing. Law unto yourself, my Lord. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ has come in the flesh have gone out into the world. Watch out. This is potent stuff right here. Any such person, and God's no respect to a person, is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead does not continue in the teachings of Christ, does not have God. How potent is that? Do you understand that most religions do not believe in the divinity of Jesus? He's not just a baby in the manger. He is God manifested in the flesh. You know.
know folk don't believe that. They've been asking, who is this babbler? Who is this? You blasphemer said you before Abraham. If you say that, that means you God. He said before Abraham was, I am. Do you know your whole eternity depends on what you believe about Jesus? Ain't that something? Your entire eternity. He's the hinge of the future. You don't believe him? He says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son does not have life. Thank God for the revelation. I'm not fussing at y'all. I'm just trying to get my point across. He says, don't even let them come to your house. They don't believe in the divinity. Jehovah Witness don't even come to my house. I'm a Jehovah Witness. You ain't no witness. You don't believe in the divinity of Jesus. I can't let you teach me. Now, if you sit here, I'll teach you. But you can't teach me. Because you ain't got off of first base yet. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. There's no God in heaven other than Jesus. God's name is Jesus. He is Jehovah your Savior. He is Yeshua. He is the multifaceted God who can be whatever he wants to be when he wants to be it. Hallelujah. And his ways past finding out. He can be almighty God that fills all time and space. He can wrap himself in Mary's womb. And at the same time, fill up all eternity. You know without controversy, great is a mystery of godliness. He that descended is the same one that ascended. Mighty God is he, am I right? Uh, the mystery of God in Christ is some type of mystery. But God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. He said, there ain't nobody in heaven I can send to rescue you. There's not an angel that can pay the price. There's not a prophet that can pay the price. Can't nobody save you but me. Can't, because I created you. And since all sin is against me, I'm the only one that can pardon sin. Angels can't pardon sin. I'm the one that pardons sin. Hallelujah. That's why when David went to bed with Bathsheba and Nathan said, thou art the man, he said, I've sinned against God. He don't even mention jacking up his best friend, his most trusted uh, soldier, am I right? Messed with his wife, amen, he said, I've sinned against God, amen, because all sin directly is a sin against God and others have the effect of it. But it started with trespassing against God. Your allegiance is to God, not to a man, it's to God. Hallelujah. Live the way I live because I want to live for God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And don't tell me God can't deliver you. He can't deliver you. I'm tired of all these old flimsy excuses. I was born this way. I was born that way. I was born to be a, with a man. You wasn't born that way. And hey, come on here. Give me a break here. If I gotta, if I gotta stop chasing women, you gotta stop chasing men. Amen. And I'm all man. I think some fine women out here, but I ain't going to hell for you. I can tell you that. Glory be to God. Come on here. Amen. I was born that. Yeah, I was born to have a woman, but I can't have all of them. It's one to a customer. Glory be to God. I can't help myself. Yeah, you can. It's a choice. You got to make up your mind which way you're going to go. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm not homophobic. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. You got to come out of sin. Don't nobody want to even preach on sin no more. Pray they'll lose their congregation. Amen. You better preach on sin. You better let somebody know where they're going. Because whatever you're doing, it don't last long enough. You can't stay high long enough. You can't stay between the sheets long enough. You got to come up out of them after a while. You can't spend all your money long enough. You need Jesus. You need eternal life. Oh, come on here. Some of y'all ain't registered right now. I'm almost finished. I'm through boring you in about 10 more minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? It's your red wagon. I done told y'all a couple of weeks ago, do what you got to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Run wherever you want to run. Amen. Y'all want to deal with me? Deal with me. Find somebody else. Do what you got to do. I know where I'm going. I already got my mind made up. I started for the kingdom a long time ago. Amen. I'm, I'm convinced that Jesus is Lord. I'm not sitting up here trying to figure out where I'm going. I'm just making sure I get a full reward. I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing that I might please him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'd say hallelujah if didn't none of y'all respond. 
Amen. I got my own personal hallelujah because I know what he's done for me and how he turned my life around. And I know he's a keeper if you want to be kept. I know it is to be tempted, but there's a crown for suffering under temptation. I may not get to it now. Amen. But how James said there, there is a reward for standing up under temptation. Yeah, I've been tempted, but God's given me strength through every temptation. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And I might help you before you read your Sunday school lesson. Amen. As long as you're over here, amen, you're going to have to be a Holy Ghost murderer. Come on here. Y'all didn't, didn't catch that. Amen. You got to kill yourself. Because right now you got two natures working in you. You got the Holy Ghost and you got the Adamic nature. And these two are fight against one another. And that's why we got such a fight going on in our system right now. One is trying to pull us, amen, one way. The other is trying to kill that other one is trying to pull us. So Paul said, mortify the deeds of the flesh which are upon the earth. Amen. When I would do good, evil was always present. But I thank my God through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm now able to fulfill the law because I got power now in my life. I got a problem, but you ain't my problem. It's that other nation that is me that's a problem. You can't help me kill it for me. I got to kill it for myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I got enough money in my wallet to pick me up a woman on Rosecrans right now. Buy me some good hashish. Amen. Could pick up two or three women because you can buy them. What's stopping me? My love for God. What's stopping me from going back to the gambling table? My love for God. What got me stop slapping somebody upside the head or cussing somebody out or pulling the trigger? My love for God. What is it that got a hold of me since I met Jesus? Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Hallelujah. Did nobody make me come to church tonight? I came because I wanted to. Uh, nobody make me serve God. It's a pleasure that God invited me to the big one. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on here. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I'm just glad I ain't going to be able to finish this lesson. I have to come back Sunday anyway. Glory be to God. I thank God for allowing me to clap my hands and, and to praise him as, as the sons of God, as the angels begin to clap and the stars begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. And the waves begin to praise him. Every time you see the waves go up, say, glory to God. When the birds fly through the air, mighty God is he. Amen. As the whale swims through the ocean, mighty God is he. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's inexhaustible. I was sharing with the class. They found this year 1,200 new species of life in the Amazon. Amen. They find over 13,000 new species of life every year, and they haven't exhausted God. You know what that ought to say to you? He's limitless. His ways past finding out. He'll be able to supply everything you need for eternity. Any God that can orchestrate 100 billion galaxies and 100 billion stars in every galaxy, he sure enough can supply your need throughout eternity and somebody ought to give him some praise right now. If the angels are giving him glory, look like I ought to be able to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He deserves my praise. I told him, if Keenan don't play the uh, piano, Andre don't play the whatever he plays, and Troy don't play nothing, you ought to have a praise all by yourself. You ought to bring a pot down here with a, with, with, a, with a spoon or something and just hit the pot with the spoon and say, let me just give God some glory. Take off your shoes and clap them together. But do something. Give God some praise. Amen. Get yourself a book and slap yourself up beside the head. But somebody ought to say, mighty God is he. Hallelujah. When I look out and see the orchestration of almighty God, he's worthy of my praise. No one has said, shout when you come into my sanctuary. Be glad when you come through my door. Please forgive me, y'all. I didn't get nowhere near. <laughs> I just have to try if the Lord tarries on Sunday to come back and share with you. Mighty God is He. Let me, let me just give you one more bit of this. Get me Isaiah 11. You know that thing I said about reigning? You reign through the millennium? The millennium period will be like 
well, it is a type of the new heaven and new earth. But it would be the most glorious day on earth since Adam and Eve were put out of the Garden of Eden. It is so powerful that when Isaiah wrote this, you sit here in this room saying, how can that be? Now listen closely. The saints who overcome will reign with him during the thousand year millennial reign and throughout eternity. During the tribulation, we're in heaven receiving our rewards for seven years. All right? But as soon as the tribulation is over and there is a short period of time that the earth must go through a renovation process, what blows my mind is that when he starts up the millennium, the nature of animals change. How do you change the nature of an animal? Let me tell you, the same way man changed when he sinned. Adam did not start off wrong. He was altogether right and in innocency. Huh? But something was infused in the human spirit that two brothers, one would kill his own brother. What got in to Cain? That he would kill his own brother and invited him out to the field to do it. Come out here. I'm mad that God receives you and didn't receive me. So they've been family problems ever since the beginning, am I right? That ought to teach us something about hating loved ones. That spirit has been around since Cain and Abel. Ah. But in Isaiah 11, he lets you to see what the characteristics of the millennium are going to be like, where Israel will be restored, and God's going to give them a second chance, so to speak. Paul actually, without me turning to it, speaks of this in Romans 11. He has blinded Israel for a little while that us Gentiles could come in. He's getting ready to put his hand back on them the second time. But let me just read a few verses from the NIV and see if this don't blow your mind. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Guess who that is? Who's that? Thank you. Do you yeah. I, I'm not doing a good job. Everybody says it's that Jesus. Here's the seven spirits of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Spirit of wisdom, understanding, spirit of counsel, might, spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears in his ears. Verse 5, righteousness will be his belt. Faithfulness, the sash around his waist. Now watch this. The wolf will lie with a lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and a lion will eat straw like the ox. Ain't that something? Fido can be a leopard. Oh, that's my pet leopard. The infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. In that day, watch out now, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people. Watch out, I gotta stop there. You know what he's saying? That at the battle of Armageddon, there's only a small portion that will survive. That portion will go into the millennium. Glory be to God. And their peace will be glorious. Those are the ones 
<laughs> the sheep, not the goat nations, that will enter into the millennium and repopulate the earth. Guess what? If you are 65 years old and survive the tribulation, go into the millennium, you may live to be 965 without a dentist, a doctor, my Lord, longevity will be restored. You can find yourself not afraid of the animal kingdom. You can play with a snake, have a cobra, have a leopard or a lion. My Lord, nothing will hurt you, my God. And we have the opportunity of going from here to there. Who wouldn't want to be in the first resurrection when God does all that? It's not a fairy tale, y'all. This ain't Disneyland. This is real. It's the word. I read it to you. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. No one will have a predator coming after them. My Lord, my Lord. Your pit bull will not turn on you. He'd be just a nice little puppy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on here. You know you want to be saved. You ought to want to, you ought, you ought to, want to see, run on and see what the end going to be. There ain't going to be no end. It'll just get more glorious and glorious as the years go by. Glory be to God. God bless you, Dad. I got to quit. We'll come back, Lord willing, on Sunday. Amen. May the Lord help and keep you. God bless you. I hope you got something out of it. Amen. Your destiny will come with part four on Sunday. Glory be to God. I don't know. Somebody ought to be glad. I'm so glad this mess is almost over with down here on planet Earth. Thank you, Lord. It's almost over, y'all. Ah, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Sin will be dealt with. God's getting ready to take us to the place where sin is no more. Hallelujah. Anybody would like to be saved tonight, we always give that invitation. There's water in our pool. We baptize seven days a week.